Disneyland is known as the happiest place on earth. It was the dream of Walt Disney. His idea was to create a place where parents and children could have fun together. And although this has been achieved, it hasn't happened without a few dark tragedies. None more infamous than the death of Debbie Stone in 1974. Deborah Gale Stone was the first child of Bill and Marilyn Stone and was born in Santa Ana, California on June the 18th, 1956. Debbie's mother stated she was our first child. When she was a little girl, she was outgoing and she would go around the neighborhood and bring home friends and ask me to give them a cookie. Growing up, Debbie was friendly, popular, and excelled in both academics and athletics, particularly track and swimming. According to her dad, very early on, you could see what kind of athlete she was. She received the principal's award for her outstanding achievements at Santa Ana High School, where she graduated in the top 10 of her class with honors. After high school, Debbie enrolled at Iowa State University. She knew this was going to be expensive, so she applied for a summer job at Disneyland to help pay for her college tuition, and she soon landed the coveted position of Disneyland hostess, which she was very excited about as it was the coolest place for any teenager to work at. America Sings opened in 1974, a show which paid tribute to America's history. This structure featured an outer ring of six theatres connected by divider walls that rotated mechanically every four minutes around the six fixed stages in the centre. In short, guests were sat in a theatre which rotated around the main stage six times. The show consisted of animatronic animals singing songs and lasted around 25 minutes. The ride it replaced was the Carousel of Progress, which moved around in a clockwise direction. America Sings rotation was reversed. This meant that on the left hand side of the stage, the walls moved towards each other and closed in place, separating each theatre. It was the 28th of June, 1974, and Debbie had just started her evening shift. Just before work, she had called her parents to ask their permission to get engaged, which her parents were thrilled about. Debbie's job was to greet audiences from the left side of the stage with a microphone, and then bid them farewell after the theatre had rotated around the five musical scenes. It was around 10.30pm as the last show was coming to a close, when Debbie's co-workers heard a blood-curdling scream coming from the theatre. Operators rushed to the scene to find Debbie's body crushed between the walls of the theatre. No one knows exactly what went wrong on that fateful night, but there has been a few theories. She may have tripped, taken a step backwards, or attempted to leap from one stage to the next, but one thing was clear, Debbie was dead, and died a quick but agonising death. Her parents heard the news later that night. It was around two in the morning when we got a phone call. It was from somebody that lived on another street saying that the deputy sheriffs were looking for us. Just about the time I hung up, they pulled up at the house. I still remember that. I can picture the two guys that were there. I can pretty well picture what they said and what I said. And of course, when you hear that, you go into shock. The feelings are there but they're dulled to the point that you really can't feel anything at all. Ask anyone who has ever lost a child. There is no greater pain on earth for a parent to endure. Following the horrific incident, Disneyland shut down the ride for two days, and the stage where Debbie died was shut down for a year. Later, sensory lights were installed on the stages to alert the operator if someone approached the walls too closely, and additional changes were made by installing breakaway walls in case the sensors failed. The ride remained operational until 1988, before it was closed down. Debbie's family sued Disneyland, which resulted in a small settlement. Debbie was laid to rest a few days following, and her parents claimed that despite the settlement, Disneyland were very nice, with Disneyland staff often visiting their house with flowers. The Stone family have had hundreds of people write to them and offer their condolences or just letting them know that the impact that Deborah had on people. One of these was a boy that was addicted to drugs. He told them that Deborah had befriended him and gave him the incentive to straighten his life out. This just shows the massive impact that she had on people. 
Debbie Stone was known for her kindness and compassion, which is evident in the number of people's lives she made an impact on. And although Debbie is no longer with us, she will always be remembered for this. Remembered for being a source of joy and inspiration to the world. And I'll leave this video with a quote from her mum. It said, One thing she was always interested in was finding some way to help others. That's the kind of person our daughter was. I am so thankful that we had and always had a wonderful relationship. Hiya, I just want to thank Amy Dan Janovich for suggesting this story to me. Um, I hope I didn't butcher your name too bad. This was a really sad one to do, um, but I believe Debbie deserved to be remembered and I hope that I did this story justice. Cheers.